Hello. In this video, we'll be focusing on object types in Blender. Note that in this section, we won't be focusing too deeply on 3D modeling, since that is out of scope for this course. We will only be focusing on just the bare basics of 3D modeling, enough for us to use the most important 3D modeling controls in Blender. So let's begin this video by discussing the object types in Blender. There are a number of different object types in Blender. Here we have the primitive object type. We also have curves. We have metaballs. We have text. We have lamps. And we have cameras. So let's just go through them one by one. First up, primitive object types. Primitive object types are the basic building blocks of 3D. So basically what that means is, these objects are pretty much inbuilt into Blender. And you can confirm this by pressing Shift A, Mesh, and the objects here are the same as the objects in the 3D viewport. I've already have this prepared for this tutorial. So the idea is you can use any of these objects as a basic building block to model whatever that you want to model. So you can basically start with a cube and then go ahead and model a character or a car or a building or a landscape or an ocean, whatever, you name it. These objects are pretty much the foundation of your final 3D object. I know it's pretty hard to build any kind of 3D model with a monkey head, but uh, I think the Blender Foundation team left the monkey head in there since this monkey is the mascot of Blender and her name is Suzanne. The next object type are curves. Curves pretty much allow you to model anything that is, well, curvy. When you actually get into 3D modeling, you'll realize how painful and tedious curve modeling can actually be. And that's the reason why we have curve object types. It aims to simplify our life so we can extend our curve, we can bend it, we can do many different things with it. And this makes it easier to model certain objects such as pipes and, uh, you know, roads and things like that. The next object type is metaballs. Metaballs are a sort of weird way to create interesting forms and shapes. Um, basically, it sort of works like jelly. So you have one metaball here, for example. If I duplicate one metaball, and I can sort of stick this metaball onto the first metaball, and as you can see, they sort of stick onto each other. And you can keep doing this to create interesting, interesting shapes. You know, there's no limit to what you can create. The longer you play with it, you probably realize you can build up interesting forms that may take ages to do via hand modeling. So that's metaballs. Next, we have text objects. Text objects are obviously great if you have anything that requires words in your 3D model. So when you want to create titles, or if you have, say, a shop front and you want to give your shop a name, uh, you can do things like that. You can obviously use a text object. So again, all of this is in here. Shift A, Mesh for primitive object types, Curve for curve object types, Text for text object types, Metaball for metaballs. Um, so you can obviously press Tab and then create any text you'd like. Um, you can change the font of your object or you obviously have to have a font installed. Um, and you can also add modifiers and things onto it. Like I'll use a solidify modifier to give my text object a bit of thickness. So you can do many, many different interesting things like that. Moving along, we have lamps. Uh, lamps obviously help to light up our world. Without lamps, our renderings would pretty much be pitch black. So we need lights. So we obviously we need light sources to help we'll see our 3D scene. So in Blender, we have a number of different lamps. So this is probably great if you have a character on stage and you just want to have the light shine on your character, but dark everywhere else. So you can do different, different interesting things like that. In Blender, you can have more than one camera in your scene. And this can obviously be used to create multiple angles of your animation shots. So for example, if you have two characters talking, a common film technique is to have one camera facing one character, the other camera facing the other character, and the, sort of like the main camera facing both the characters. And then as your animation plays, you can use the video editor to control which camera is triggered at which part of the time frame. You can control which camera is 
the main focus camera uh, during the timeline. And when you're doing video editing, for example, you can control on the timeline which camera should be the main focus and things like that. So those are the main object types in Blender. And those are the main 3D objects in Blender. I hope this video has been useful to you and that you've learned something interesting. Um, keep blending and I hope to see you in the next video.